Hello everyone, welcome to another video by 3G4G. We often get asked certain questions that make us wonder, do people understand how money flows within the mobile industry? As a basic principle, most companies are dependent on the end consumers for them to be able to survive. The mobile industry is no different. The mobile network operators, or MNOs, provide the service and the end consumers, like us, pay for them. What we pay doesn't only sustain the mobile operators, but a whole host of other companies that provide technologies, hardware, instruments, services, etc. Let's try to understand this in the video. So let's start with the consumer and the MNO or service provider, SP as some people refer to them. One of the biggest expense for an MNO is the spectrum fees. The government is a direct beneficiary of this. In some countries, this can take the form of one-off fees, which is payable after auction, while in some other countries, this could be monthly or annual fees. In France this week, the government has reached an agreement with the mobile operators to extend the term of spectrum licenses in return for operators providing 100% geographic coverage by 2020. Another big expense for the MNO is equipment. This is supplied by many different vendors. It's very rare for a single vendor to supply all the necessary equipment to an MNO. With the modernization of networks taking place in form of SDN and NFV, MNOs are looking for interchangeable modules and functions from vendors that can be replaced if they do not function as per the requirements or are not upgraded to the latest version of standards at a reasonable speed. Test and measurement companies play an important role in the mobile networks too. They are used all the way from testing if the network modules and functions are behaving correctly to checking for the flow of signaling data, bottlenecks and even lawful interception. Finally, the deployment and field services are responsible for all the planning, installation, testing and maintenance of the networks. Some of these functions are in-house, while many of them are provided by external companies. Functions like site acquisition, installation on towers, drive testing, user experience test and optimization fall in this category. Both the network equipment vendors, as well as the deployment and field services, take the help of test and measurement vendors too. This could be in the form of test equipment like load testers, drive test tools, or just some simple scripts to simulate handsets or load on the network. Coming back to the consumer, their main spenders on the device, handset or smartphone. They would purchase them directly from a retailer or indirectly from the mobile network operator. On the smartphones and other devices, consumers download a lot of apps. While most of them are free, some of them are paid, so consumers spend money on them too. There are apps with subscription services where the consumers would pay monthly or annual subscription fees. The smartphone manufacturers sometimes pay to get their own apps developed or develop it themselves. It's always tricky to do it themselves as there are no, so many requirements and variations. App subscription services can get their own apps developed and maintained by third parties too. This allows them to focus on the core issue rather than get bogged down by app development. The mobile and smartphone vendors take help from the test and measurement vendors too. It's always difficult to test with the live network, so network simulators are a mobile device manufacturer's best friend. In addition, there is R&D testing, carrier acceptance testing, and many different types of requirements that the TNM vendors solve. There is a good amount of royalty and IPR payments between vendors. These payments are mostly by smartphone vendors to other smartphone vendors or to other network equipment vendors. This is one of the main reasons why your handsets are expensive. A big part of your smartphone cost is the IPR payment. Small manufacturers get away by not paying these royalties, thereby keeping the costs low. Of course, it's not legal, but it's difficult to chase a lot of these small manufacturers. Then, of course, there is payment from the consumer to the service provider, either in advance, like in the prepay or pay as you go scheme or postpay or monthly subscription charges. Finally, if your service provider is subsidizing your handset, as in the case of postpay, then there will be a flow of money from the operator to the handset manufacturers. I hope you found this short presentation on how the money flows within the mobile industry useful. As always, we are very pleased to hear your views, opinions, suggestions and feedback in general. Please make sure to click on the like button to let us know. Until the next time, goodbye.